You know, there are those miniature projects that are really more about creating a unique, interesting story and a fine piece of art where we're exploring delicate textures, storytelling through all of these very controlled and very beautiful naturalistic elements. And then there are those projects where you just want to paint a classic Sagas space marine with a bunch of non-metallic metal and a big power sword. And I love that miniature painting can be home to both of these aesthetics. So in today's video, I'll be showing you a very detailed paint job of the Primark of the Dark Angels, Lionel Johnson. And as per usual, the full one hour edit of this video is available to my patrons over on Patreon. And believe me, there is a lot to talk about in this video. So I definitely recommend hopping on over to Patreon and checking out the extended edit of this video. For now, let's talk about the colors and the paints that I've used for painting this miniature. The painting of Lionel Johnson is a paint job that focuses heavily on the contrast between green and red and we use a saturated yellow to bridge the gap between these two colors. The main colors on the palette are Chimera Violet, Thalo Green, Schmincke Red Iron Oxide and Schmincke Titanium Yellow. These colors are to some extent present in all of the materials across the miniature. But please notice that I'm only using the Chimera Violet for shading and for mixing. We never see it in this pure form on the miniature. It's always mixed with either the red or the green. And if I do use the pure violet, I'll be covering it with subsequent layers. So I think that these colors are the most important for the paint job, but there are a few paints that are going to be helpful for mixing some of the other tones. And you can notice how all of these paints lie within the gamut that we've just seen on the screen. The paints on the palette are violet, silver gray, phthalo green, black, and ice yellow from Vallejo. From Schmincke, we have red iron oxide, yellow iron oxide, ultramarine blue, Van Dyke brown, titanium white, and titanium yellow. Now, if you do not have these paints at your disposal, do not worry. You can mix something that is akin to these tones. All the recipes I'm using will be shown on screen and you can color match with whatever paints you have available. I start off with painting the gold. First of all, I have to apologize for the focus brackets that you're seeing on screen here. These will be going away in a little bit. I got a new camera, so I had to make a few tweaks and changes to some of the settings. As you can see, the palette that I'm using for the gold is displayed on screen right now. And here I'm using a combination of Schmincke and Chimera. Uh, especially Schmincke Red Iron Oxide and Yellow Oxide is really colors that I've come to like quite a bit. These paints are really, really nice. I start with base coating the entire element with the darkest mixture of Violet and Red Iron Oxide. And as I layer, I make sure to cover smaller and smaller areas with the lighter tones. I'll be painting the lion on the shoulder to a level that I like before moving on to other parts of the miniature. I really want to make the lion shine and I'm focusing on the reflections on some of the raised areas and especially on the nose where I want the most of the light to hit. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that this approach is very different from what I usually do. Uh, painting element by element is not something that I necessarily advocate or usually do, but this is a part of the challenge with painting this miniature because there are so many details that sketching is really tricky. And for me, that's a really interesting challenge to try to work in a different way. It will, of course, pose a few issues that we'll see later on as well. But at this point, just starting out, I'm still blissfully unaware of these challenges that I'll face later on in the paint job. Once I've painted a bit more of the gold and have uh, the gold to a point where I like it, I'll start to work on the green armor. Here I'm using again violet as my shadow tone, just like I did for the gold parts, and thalo green in the midtones and ice yellow to highlight. I'm looking to apply a more of a textured brush stroke as I move along this cylinder. I want the armor to feel like it's very dark and shiny, so the jumps in contrast have to be very, very big. And we have to leave uh, rather large parts of the armor in this very dark green tone. Next, I'm pulling out the watercolors and doing a bit of black lining. And let me tell you, filming this step was particularly painstaking. There are a lot of small recesses and different elements on the miniature and keeping the model in frame and in focus while trying to paint these very delicate lines 
was not easy. So I hope you'll appreciate this footage. And speaking of appreciation, the best way to appreciate me and the work I do here is to head on over to my Patreon where you can support me and get access to the hour long version of this video that you're watching right now. The longer edit has detailed narration and produced to the same degree that you're seeing here. And so this longer format really allows me to go more in depth with each step of the process. And if you're watching this video at its release date, there are more than 20 hours of video content along with several PDF guides available to my patrons over on Patreon. Even more if you're watching in the future. So if you like what you're seeing, I hope that you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon. If you do so, you'll be joining my supporters that you're seeing on screen right now. Thank you all so much for your generous support. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you there. Anyway, let's get back to the painting of Lionel Johnson. As more and more of the model comes closer to being finished, I'm reworking some of the final highlights a bit more. And I know that this seems like something that I keep going back to, which it is. I hope that you'll understand just how important these highlights are for the painting to really shine in the end. There are several different shiny elements on this model, so I wanted to make sure to really get that final light in its correct place. This is especially where we're seeing some of the shortcomings of not sketching. Because we're painting this miniature uh, element by element, we're really not seeing the cohesive sort of general view of the figure. So whenever we paint something and it looks good on its own, such as the shield and this arm for instance, when we attach it to the model, we're then seeing that it changes the dynamic of the figure as a whole. And then what looked good on its own, all of a sudden we have to change that a bit. So in this project, I'm doing quite a bit of working and reworking on the final lights. On the top of the shield, I add these very bright reflections, and these serve to kind of frame the face alongside with the very shiny non-metallic metal on the shoulders. Also on this part in front of the chin, I add some brighter lights as well. All of these highlights sort of create a halo around the face of the lion. Whenever you're painting non-metallic metal steel, I think it's especially important to take into consideration the colors of the environment. The sword should, after all, reflect some of the colors that are happening around the miniature. So I'm using much of the same color that you've seen, but working with a more desaturated palette. And as you can see on the overlay, this series of green and gray blue tones work quite well to make for this sort of reflective steel sword. I'm looking for placements of different reflections up and down the length of the sword. In reality, the sword would probably really just catch much of the sky and be quite the same color. But in the far out universe of Warhammer 40k, we can do whatever we want. So let's have a little more fun with it than that. And I'm not too concerned with adding a few extra gradients. I settle on an angle that's quite more or less the same down through the length of the sword. Although on the brightest reflection that is down towards the tip of the sword, I break this rule a bit. I wanted to try to create this sort of lens flare effect just around the brightest point on that tip on the middle of the blade. I'm making sure to work in relatively thin layers here, but I'm not glazing before I have locked in the colors. We can sketch a bit on this element, so let's take advantage of that. Once I like the placement of the reflections, I'm glazing in a bit of Van Dyke Brown and Thello Green. I also in this step add a little bit too much color, so I have to go in and rework some of the highlights. I also work with a bit more black lining and reworking the edges a bit off camera. The 
the helmet is probably the most important element on this entire model. And we can give the face mask a very similar treatment to the armor plates and the gold elements that we've already painted. Don't be afraid to use a bit of the eye color around the eye as this can help to give the appearance of him having glowing eyes. For the wings on the helmet, I'm using a non-metallic metal gold procedure that is much similar to what we've already seen on the model. And you can see the difference between the two sides where one's painted and one is yet to be finished. I try to squeeze in as many gradients on these tips of the wings as possible and you can see sort of what I'm aiming for on the opposite side of the helmet. Black lining and edge highlighting on this helmet is really important to create the definition that we need between the different strands of the wings. The base is done with a violet base coat, a bunch of dry brushing, airbrushing in some more saturated greens, and a little bit of a wash in the end to bring out some of the recesses. Pretty standard Warhammer painting techniques that I'm sure you all know. I put the miniature on the base and called the lion finished. Are you ready to see the final product? Let's go. There he is. The lion is finished. Is the lion really finished? The truth is, there are some corrections that I could still see that I'd like to do, but we'll save those for another video since this project is long overdue already. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe even sign up for the Patreon. See you soon. Oh yeah, and happy painting. <laughs>